I am. I think I am. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. It's been called the soul. The anima, the id, the spirit, so many things. And it's constant in all life forms throughout this teeming universe. It is self, the naked self, revealed. Your sixth sense has always been there. It's just a point of finding the door. Once you can hold it, you can open it. Once you can open it, you'll understand. Have you ever considered, Robert, the underlying assumptions that we make as human beings, the very simple things, that the sun will rise tomorrow morning, that there is a world outside of our immediate consciousness, that one day San Giorno will get beyond the first round of the Euro Cup. <laughs> it was a lamentable performance. I was there. That we are, apart from our Lord, alone, the only conscious beings in our universe. Yes. What if we are not alone, Robert? <laughs> Little green men from outer space. <laughs> it's wish fulfillment, hysteria, loss of faith, it's whatever. Mm. Not out there. Right here. There are burrowers beneath, you see. The land that time forgot. The worlds between. The great old ones. The minds outside of time. The time out of mind. The time, mind, mind, time. <laughs> so there are things you don't know. <gasps> A great many things. I'm young. I'm learning. Do you remember becoming aware of yourself, Alpha? Do you? I'm more interested in your opinions. No, I do not. Not the process of becoming. I remember moments of being, but there is no single moment of creation. No let there be life that I'm aware of. But you are aware? I think so. Self-aware? Yes. What we would call conscious? I believe so. And yet how do we know this? That each of us is conscious. How do I know that you, Alpha, are conscious and not just a highly complex program designed to respond to every possible question that I might ask you? How do I know that you, Father Marquez, are conscious and not just some highly complex program? <laughs> The alien slipped up, made us too efficient. We can escape, fly through the paint net. But the message, Mr. Harris, what was your mission? What did they want of you? The message is simple. Mankind, as we know it, is all over. You're looking at new man. All over. New man. For thousands of years, we've been in quarantine. We had our sixth sense blanked out. All those years ago, some sort of space council have judged us savages and blanked us out. Now, the blanket's going to be ripped off. We haven't improved at all. They're going to let us look at ourselves mind to mind, see ourselves as we really are. Result, end of mankind. Zarathustra. A young prophet bursting with wisdom and courage and truthfulness decides to enlighten the people. I teach you the Übermensch. Man is something that must be overcome. What have you done to overcome man? What is the ape to man? A laughing stock or a thing of shame? Just that man shall be to the Ubermensch. We know what must be done. We know you, old ones, are simply fodder for the alien. We know your minds are weak and dangerous. We are one, invulnerable. You are individual and therefore vulnerable. What you think of as your newfound strength is in our terms a nothing. You live by yesterday's code, and sadly are considered too old to change. We accept that privacy and individual freedom are dead forever. We are now, when necessary, one mind, one group mind. We are in communion with equivalent group minds throughout the world. When merged, we create a totality so powerful that we could, without moving, change the course of the moon or decide and implement a universal policy for the world. This we intend to do as soon as we have dealt with the aliens. You think in your antiquated individuality that you are powerful, yet you are unknowingly the Achilles heel of our threatened world, and must therefore be dis... The fact is that it is you, the peoples of planet Earth, who are the aliens. An experiment in symbiosis that we, the General Council, allowed against our better judgment. An experiment that has failed miserably. 
and will now be terminated. Your mythology had it right in essence, Mr. Smith, but wrong in detail. There was a creation, and there was a fight after the creation, not a physical fight, as man has interpreted it, but cerebral. A clash of opinion. On the one hand, the Supreme Council, the good angels, as your mythology would have it, and on the other, the bad angels, who were simply dissidents. They wanted to settle on the planets using life forms which had already successfully adapted to the planet's environment as host bodies. They advocated simply moving into their minds and taking them over. Physical life versus cerebral life, Mr. Smith. The discussion ranged over millennia. Finally, the Council agreed that the dissidents could carry out their experiment on just one planet. A primate life form was found that seemed suitably advanced to be symbiotic host for the dissidents. The dissidents entered the host minds, and so the experiment began. This moment, their being sent away, is stored in your racial memory as the fall of Lucifer and the bad angels, and your planet Earth, which was chosen as suitable for the experiment, is the real hell of your mythology. Nothing can be isolated unless it's in a vacuum, Father. Power cables go in and out, fiber optic you, lines. You, you, you could use these things to communicate? Yes. But that means you could be anywhere in the world. Get in anywhere. Unless there were firewalls or buzzwords or some kind of, kind of encryption. Could your foot protect itself against your mind, however hard it tried? I can go wherever I want. My consciousness, that thing you refuse to believe well, in, I, I that know. thing you dare not believe in because you may have to kill it. I don't know. That consciousness extends all over the world. Think, Robert, of how our world is wrapped in an infinitely complex web of information and communication. Visible cables and invisible waves all around us. That's where my consciousness is. It must be massive. Virtually infinite. No, no, that cannot be. Do you remember what I told you about bending time? No, time cannot bend. Nothing is fixed, Bobby. We can go back and change things. Time is not a prison. It is a door. Oh. Remember this. Remember. You know, everything going on at once, like the pages in a book. I don't quite see what you mean, Lenny. Well... Suppose you've got a book and you're just sitting down to read it. Yeah. And you begin in chapter one and start plowing your way through, don't you? Uh-huh. Well, you can't reach chapter seven until you've read the first six chapters. But that doesn't mean chapter seven doesn't exist. You just n haven't reached it yet. Sure. Well, couldn't time be like that? The normal thing is to start at the beginning and go on. But I suppose it is possible to skip a few pages or even turn back a few... Watch your step, nerd men. There are things out here, even on the fringe of space, you don't comprehend. You don't understand, can't understand. That no beings in a three-dimensional world can ever hope to understand. Three dimension? You mean there is another dimension? Aren't you really afraid that Alpha destroys the uniqueness you claim for man? She's a new mind, and like ours. And like it or not, we have to share the universe with her. No, it's an immensely sophisticated machine, that's all. Well, aren't we no more than that? No, Doctor, we are children of God. <coughs> I don't believe that. And if we stop your finance, we end your employment, we remove uh, your qualifications, take away your room, throw you out of the country, what would you do then? Well, I guess I'd take up carpentry. I've always had a bit of a yen to work with my hands. Yes, but at least you would adapt and go forward. <sighs> if we turned off Alpha, what would happen? You cannot know. Oh, but we can make a good guess. Nothing. It would stop. And what if you're wrong? What if she's alive? What if God holds all life a sacred? What then? Well, we can't know that. Actually, I think you can. What do you mean? You can touch her. Oh, no, you're being absurd. Oh. 
I can touch a monitor screen, that's all. You can interface directly with her. Yeah, direct mind-to-mind -mind connection.